I'm Hi, everyone. very excited for today's <laughs> stream and thank you for joining Hi, us. Hi. Hello. 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 How is everyone today? This is a very exciting uh, 20th anniversary celebration of the Elder Scrolls III Morrowind. We are joined by several of the cast members, uh, the characters who helped bring the game to life to discuss the game, to uh, talk about everyone's experiences. And of course, this is all in support of the Alzheimer's Association and the Longest Day campaign. Uh, we will be raising money in support of that as part of the Fallout for Hope initiative. So thank you to Ken from Chad, the Fallout 76 podcast, for putting everything together today. Absolutely. And Fallout for Hope has been doing great things over the past several, uh, this past year, raising funds for a great number of charitable organizations and uh, being able to, to reach out and help the folks at the Alzheimer's Association with this. And End ALZ is uh, very near and dear to our heart. And uh, I really appreciate everybody. We're having fun for funds over the next several days, all the way through the 26th. So if you can even contribute a dollar, 50 cents, whatever little you can, if you're gonna buy a cup of coffee, buy a cup of coffee for somebody uh, who's uh, dealing with some very hard things right now. And uh, it'll be very easy for you to donate. Uh, in fact, uh, all we have to do is put a little something in there and uh, like this and look in the chat. And the next thing you know, you're going to be able to, there it is, see that? <laughs> You just hit that button, you can donate very easily, and you're gonna help not just people who are dealing with Alzheimer's and looking for research and trying to uh, to fund research, but you're gonna help the caretakers. And that's so important because Alzheimer's takes people from you before it takes them from you. It, it takes everything you ever were and everything you will be. And it devastates families along the way. It's almost like a silent thing. We don't talk about what it does to our families. We keep it a secret. Well, now it's out in the open. We've had enough, we're dropping the gloves and we're gonna end ALZ and we're gonna do it through fun. We're gonna do it today with uh, the cast of Morrowind and hopefully each and every one of you in the gaming community who have been so wonderful uh, making all this happen, and especially Kenneth Vigu, uh, who we love over at uh, uh, Fallout for Hope and the Chad76 podcast. Thank you. I guess we should start by uh, everyone going around and introducing themselves, talking about uh, who they played in Morrowind, or if you played multiple people, which I believe uh, most of you did. Yeah, we had multiple. Uh, who you, you go ahead and tell, uh, say who you want to talk to, George, and we have Ophelia <laughs> here as well. Uh, to tell us about yourselves, and then we'll tell you about ourselves. We'll share. You want to go first, George? Uh, sure. I'll be hosting the stream today. Uh, usually, I stream a lot of Elder Scrolls games. It's something I've been doing for several years now. Uh, being a part of the community, seeing the good that they can do through these different charity events, and also just seeing the communities to come, come together to support each other in games and in real life as well. So what we're doing today feels like a really natural extension of what the Elder Schools community has been about for many years, and it's really great to be a part of that. Uh, Ophelia, if you want to <laughs> introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Ophelia. I work at Bethesda UK as one of the community managers and I look mostly after Elder Scrolls games. So, um, this is kind of surreal and also very uh, <laughs> it is. Uh, cool to be a part of this panel because uh, if not Morrowind, I wouldn't be sitting here because Morrowind kickstarted kind of my, uh, my lifelong dream of working in games at some point and i've never expected myself to actually work on elder scrolls so it's a huge privilege to be on this panel especially uh raising hoping to help raise money for such an amazing co cause as well so uh yeah i am super excited to uh discuss everything more in today <laughs> about <laughs> voice acting and all the characters and we have a, such a wonderful panel of cast in here it's it's incredible which, on that note, in the few minutes that we've been live, we've already raised $160.72. Oh, thank well. you, guys. That's so, wonderful. A really incredible start. So thank you, everyone who is participating and watching right now. Uh, but if we go the, around the room, um, I guess we'll start with uh, with Catherine. Hi there. Um, I hate to admit this, but the only video game I've ever voiced was Morrowind. <laughs> 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 and and I have another confession to make. 
that I've never watched it or even played it, and I feel terrible. But most <laughs> You've all listen. It's been a short amount of time, Catherine. You've only had twenty years to do it, so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, mainly my life really has been live theatre and voiceovers, but not games. But I'm thrilled to be asked to be here. I've been terrified, I have to admit. I mean, this really has terrified me. I thought, I don't know what I'm going to say. What, what are these games and all this sort of thing? Because, you know, I, my little grey cells aren't very savvy with um, technology. But anyway, I'm happy you were the you were the high elves, and you were also the Breton females. I know. Uh, I, I had to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make sure to show some today. Don't worry. I was I was the Breton males. So between us, we oh, created really? an entire world of Bretons. Oh yes. Well, oh gosh. You know <laughs> what so, is so interesting, Catherine? Your work in Marlin is so reflective of just what you did right now. That honesty. And yeah. that believability uh, oh, really? and that vulnerability. Wow. Yeah, really. It's just. Thank you. I'm yeah, so, so what I feel. you know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. Anyway, that's me. I'm happy to be here. And it's a wonderful cause. Absolutely. Oh. Uh, David? Uh, I'm David Du Bois. Uh, I played uh, the male. Uh, Altners. I auditioned for the female Altners. I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but, uh, um, I've also did some voices for some other games, death gate and a couple of star Trek, uh, games. And, uh, uh, when you, uh, unless I'm very mistaken, I think there are a number of premier game voice people like Wes, uh, who do a lot of games and are well known. Then there's us red shirts. In the, in the game voice business who sort of pop in give instructions we say the men's room is down to the left and then our character disappears that was my uh, favorite line in Morwin. <laughs> it's right down there that's it uh, uh and and everybody else uh, all the other actors on this site will be able to tell you about the other things that we do the on-camera work the book narration the even the behind the scenes the writing directing and producing that Absolutely. a lot of us do but it, it's a it's a pleasure that to have been a very small part of something that is still alive and well. Hmm. Uh, Elizabeth. Yes. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Noon, and um, I've been fortunate enough to be in um, Oblivion and Morrowind and um, Fallout Four. So um, the characters that I've been that I've had the opportunity to play in this whole series have been quite diverse and quite challenging and just so wonderful to be able to work with as, as a performer, as an actor, because of the writing. Writing is so brilliant. It has that, been. Um, yeah. You get an opportunity to really um, formulate or, or, or um, imagine the character with yourself. You can actually make that what I call a marriage between the written word and my heart in my mind so that's been great and um with marwin um i did khajiit the female khajiit i did i auditioned for the male khajiit <laughs> damn it all you know and um and then also the argonian female so it's just been you were a, orcs as well you were female orcs yes and i was a female orcs yes right yeah, I think I think we all occasionally feel like an orc in our daily lives. I think I think we are orcs sometimes. You know, in our daily lives. Now, Liz, somebody oh. online has just asked what voice you did in Fallout. Um, in Fallout, I did Irma, um, you know, who was a kind of Mae West kind of um, character. At least I I sort of formulated her with thinking of Mae West, and then um, the sergeant, Ronnie. Uh, uh, Ronnie Shaw, Ronnie Shaw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did both of those. <laughs> oh. uh, Jeff? Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Jeff Baker, and I did voice work on uh, the Elder Scrolls series. And uh, gosh, I don't remember all the characters that I did. There were so many of them. I was so delighted to be able to work with such a great crew of people at Bethesda Softworks. Um, and it shows here that you were the uh, uh, St. Jube 
and yeah. uh, oh, okay. the Dunmer and all you are all the dark elves. And that voice, by the way, still haunts people's dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Which voice was that? The dark elves, the gravelly one. Remember the one that oh, you did that yes. that ragged you out so much after all those sessions. <laughs> yes, I never knew whether to do that first or last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's great about about this event is reuniting with people that uh, I haven't worked with in a long time, uh, with Wes and uh, with Catherine, who yeah. directed me and As You Like As It. As You Like It, I remember. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was selling them earlier before we went on live about how we were able to go down into the basement at Folger yeah. and handle a first folio. Yes. And I still remember that so vividly. <laughs> it's just great to see you again. And David Dubois, he and I worked on television together back in the day uh, at Crabs. was the yeah. name of that show. Crabs. Live comedy. And Wes and I did uh, comedy on stage together. So it's just great to reunite with everyone. And it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since yeah. we did those games. It's 20 years hard to... this past May now. I believe either May 1st or May 2nd was the anniversary Wow. That's crazy. Just crazy. All, the, all the roles you did for this, Jeff, I mean, you were like, you are a couple of the, the Daedric uh, Prince, you were Dagathur, you were Merun's Dagon. And uh, one of the things that's very interesting is, is you were actually the voice of Shea Gorath in Morrowind. And I always tell people that that was actually Haskell say, on the phone, uh, talking through the statues <laughs> because uh, uh, Shea Gorath was off in the mind of a dead emperor somewhere, but uh, uh, <laughs> that you ended up becoming Haskell in uh, Oblivion in the Shivering Isles, which yeah, we, right. I have, we've taken that on the road, Haskell yeah. and Shea Gorath. We've gone to conventions and people are just, they're like delighted about that. Yeah, um, yeah, we need to do more of those. Uh, now that COVID is starting to lift, hopefully we can get back out on the road again. Yeah, yeah, that's hey kids, let's put on a show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, uh, I will be hopping into the game that way. You guys will be able to see it, to hear some of the characters, but we will also just be uh, talking about your experiences working with Bethesda, what voice acting was like for video games twenty years ago versus kind of how it's changed over the years. Because I imagine with the size and scale of games increasing exponentially over the years that. Uh, things must have changed, and Morrowind is a game where there's only certain parts of it that are voiced. It's not a fully voiced game, right. so those handful of lines that each character, each race does have, that's what really helps bring it to life and kind of define those characters, those races, kind of like you mentioned before, Wes. I don't know if you got a chance to officially introduce yourself. I may have cut you off oh, there. That's okay. I'm cut off all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm Wes, and uh, I played... Uh, all the male Bretons, and I was the male Orcs. I, I was Malakath and Molig Ball and uh, uh, Bothia. And uh, if you did enter the game, came off the boat, first person you talked to was Jeff, uh, who wakes you up. But then you get to come see me, and I'm like, ah, oh, yes, we've been expecting you. Come right in. Tell us a bit about yourselves. And I, of course, I find out someone stole your sweet role. What will you do? So that was. Uh, I love that that character. So uh, it, it was voicing Morrowind was amazing because the only thing I'd done before that was uh, um, Unreal Two, the game Unreal Two, and I didn't even have a real character. I just was brought in to do effort sounds. I was playing like two hundred different people who died in about four hundred different ways. Okay, Wes, that's great. Uh, okay, you're you're laser lasered here. Okay. Ah! Okay, Wes, now uh, you get yourself caught in a zipper and bleed to death slowly. Ah! So, you know, basically four hours of painful deaths. I was the in living embodiment of a Wilhelm scream for that game. So being able to do Morrowind and actually have characters was a, a great deal of fun for me. But it was the playing of Morrowind for me later and hearing how all these integrated and how the immersive the game became and, and how the performance uh, was like a movie, but so much more because it's interactive that changed the way I viewed voicing video games so that when I went and did Oblivion, I had a completely different mindset uh, on, on how to voice a game. So that is the change for me. 
from Morrowind going into Oblivion, but I would say that in regard to the voice acting itself, no matter how the technology changes, the acting remains yeah. pretty much the same. On that note, I did find a, uh, a female Altmer, because I know that we have uh, <laughs> Catherine who voiced them. Damn it! <laughs> oh, again, it's those, uh, those introduction lines. It's introduction, it's uh, combat lines, so you'll hear a lot of them when you walk up to different characters or when you're fighting different characters. And I'm sure there's a lot that went into trying to get, like you said, all those different uh, those death screams and everything, because there's so many different variations, even in a game where it's not fully voiced. It was funny the way they would spell it out in the script when you had to scream. <laughs> yes. It'd be like A R R R G H. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you never actually just say arg. Yeah, you know, when it, okay, uh, here's your line. Your line is arg, and we're like arg, and they're like, yeah, can you maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Don't be so literal. Thanks. You know, one thing I found interesting too in those battle scenes was to. Um, to really do the movement mm -hmm. of the character. So yeah. that, for instance, when you took a sword or I took a weapon and the, the sound that, you know, and yeah. then what it was like when I hit. And, um, you know, you had to be very careful that you didn't knock something over in the studio because, you know, um, we we use our bodies mm -hmm. we, with our voices that you hear that people hear but we're using our bodies in 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 the studio but that was that was really interesting too because i wasn't used to that kind of work you know this was 20 years ago kids <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> rarely when you're doing a commercial or a, a, a narration for a documentary do you does it come to the moment where you have to swing a broadsword at somebody <laughs> <laughs> We're getting hit by one. Yeah, or getting hit by well, actually, that happens in in the casting process. Oh, okay, that's how they yeah. eventually get the uh, the better death sound. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever survives gets the role. That's how that works. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but that is really interesting. Is like, are you stabbing someone? Are you slicing them? Are you mm -hmm. hitting them over the head? You know, and each one of those grunts that comes from us. Um, we work at trying to reflect the action that we're doing, you know. Absolutely. It's very physical. Voice acting is very physical. Very physical. People think it's just the, the voice, but it's your entire body. It's your entire instrument. It's every part of you, including, I mean, if you're not really uh, committed to the character or to the role, and, and, and bring some of your own life experiences and your own uh, real, uh, you know, emotions, to a scene, then it's just skimming the surface. And uh, that's with any acting, I think. Any role you're in, you have to submerge yourself and and yet still use a real true part of yourself to bring it to life. So here's a question for you. Has the actor's performances affected the appearance or the actions or the facial expressions of the characters on the screen? Oh. I'm, certainly, I'm certain it's a lot different now than it was 20 years ago. But I'm just curious as to how much what we do into a microphone affects what the character looks like or acts like on screen. That's a good question. Yeah. I think it's more. it was more important when the graphics were not as advanced mm -hmm. uh, to, for, the, for the audio, the sound, because that, you know, basically the, a good oral experience uh, allows you to fill in a lot of the blanks that the uh, animation and the visuals are not giving you. And so it was, I think, more important back in Morrowind's day that you have a fully fleshed out character audio wise than it is today where you can actually see the characters emoting on screen. I remember one session um, where we were shown drawings oh, of what the character would look like. If there is yeah. Anything, I, uh, I can't remember exactly which My game it was, but that was really helpful. Uh, it does help. Yeah, it helps a lot when you see what they're going to look like. I don't know how they ended up really being rendered, but at the time, those those <laughs> well, were you can see on screen at least really uh, how some people turned out. Yeah, right, right. You, you actually got a, a picture of what you're supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Did they not I, give I you one? I didn't anything like that. <laughs> I, just, I just thought, oh, I'm just going to go for it. I had none of that. 
that, that, that's interesting. So yeah, that only happened once that I remember. Oh, they yeah. <laughs> Very few times I've been given a photograph and or a, a picture or, or uh, only once was I ever given a portion of the script to look at ahead of time. And that was uh, Shea Gorath for The Shivering Isles. And for most, in most instances, like when you go into a game, you're, a script is put in front of you and that's the first time you've ever seen it. Yeah, and that's right. You may have a rough idea of what one of the characters are going to be, and back in the day when we were doing Morrowind and uh, originally the first uh, go-throughs on Oblivion, you're playing race. You're playing the race of a character, so they're very similar. So you're, you're sticking pretty much with one thing throughout. However, uh, you come in now with a session for voiceovers and you've got maybe one or two you know, and there's three others they throw at you. So you've got to pull something. The improv comes in awfully handy. Uh, to be able to come up with characters on the fly and take some things maybe you've done before and mix and match and get creative with it and uh you know it's it's really a challenge and and the the other difficult part of that and it happened for me more on the star trek uh, games that i voiced because like you were talking about i was doing a number of smaller characters yeah you gotta remember what you did with the last voice <laughs> oh, right so yeah so right <laughs> into what you're doing to this voice you know, along that, one, one of the things that, that I found really fascinating was how, um, what David was saying, how you would develop characters uh, when you'd be going from one to the other, and how I did it, um, which really helped me, and I learned from, you know, people that, that, were, that were quite um, well-known in the, in the business at that time, is to place the character at a certain part in my body, a the voice me. of that character. Is that character more in my chest? Is that character way down, you know, where I can kind of feel him in my gut almost? You know, or is he just kind of like in the head, you know? Yeah. Um, and that helped me remember, uh, you know, where that character was. So I always placed the voice in somewhere specific in my body. So did everybody, I mean, I just remember having page after page, it was six mm -hmm. hours a day we were working. Yeah, yeah. And I remember having the same sentence. <laughs> I feel a bit, I, I'm feeling, whatever the sentence was. And then yeah. by the side of it would be angry, sad, yep. mm -hmm. haughty. And there were just these words and I, I'd never come across that word. So I just went along and just did the voice with that emotion. Is that yeah. common? Was that... Is it happening now? Yeah. It, it's the same. Yeah, it happened a lot. It happened a lot. Yeah. Because the AI changes depending upon the situation oh, with the, the player and how they're coming at you. Yeah. yeah. And does that then, sorry to be so ignorant, but I, I am. Oh, no. Um, so you're Not going down with all these different emotions, changing your voice, doing whatever you're doing. And then the editors, the people that are doing it, listen to each one and decide what they want for their film. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the editors go through and they throw things in left and right. And, uh, okay. Actually, I think, Catherine, I'm not sure if it was you that did the voice. There was one line, and I'm not sure if it was more when I think it was Oblivion, where you stopped in the middle and said, hold on, let me give that to you again. And you started over, and for some reason, that whole take ended up in the in game. The game. Yep. So you yeah, start- probably you, me. Yeah, so you start the line, you get midway through the line, you stop and say, wait a minute, let me take that again, then give the line. Oh my God! They made it into the game? Yeah, That's amazing. That full line, it's like, hold on, I want to take that again. I've seen that video before, that's yeah. That's so funny. Oh, shit, I'm great. I'm, I'm, sorry. Oh, that's great. I don't have to uh, look at uh, the, the people in chat are already saying, yeah. I love that line. That line is legendary. They. No. I, I remember that. finding yes. it on YouTube uh, years ago. It had a ton of views, I think. Easily, um, tens of thousands, if not more. <laughs> it's crazy, just the small inside jokes that people make from games. Uh, Morwen's 20 years old, and there's a lot of fans of The Elder Scrolls as a franchise that still say that it is their favorite game in the franchise, that point to it, point to the characters, and even with only those couple of lines, even if it is a line shared across all members of that race, they still just mm -hmm. associate those lines so closely, and it lives on so vividly in their head. I had someone in chat just ask that if any of you thought that 20 years later people would still be talking about this, playing it, thinking of it so fondly. The games are the games are addictive. 
I mean, they really are. When I first started playing Morrowind, I ended up putting 600 hours into the game and you play, you sit down and you think, I'm going to play a half an hour before bed. And the next thing you know, the birds are chirping outside and your day is toast. <laughs> you are, it is over. Uh, so you really, I mean, you, you go to sleep and you dream in that world. Uh, these games really leave an impression on you. So I'm not surprised that it's lasted throughout time. What what surprises me is that we're able to continue with the game systems changing as often as they do. And again, I started playing this on PC and then on to console. The difference between PC and console is one of them I get to sit on my couch. I like that. Um, but, you know, basically, the longer you the, the technology allows you to play the game, I think people will always. Absolutely. And I remember Have in the case of- Have done anything different with the game at all over all these years, Ophelia? Is it the same as it was then? Have they enhanced anything? Um, I mean, more and I mean, it's kind of weird because I we play it every year, as, as weird <laughs> as it sounds, because it left such an impression. And um, um, obviously now looking at it, like, Oh yeah, that that rat might not look particular like a rat or something, but back in the day, your mind obviously filled in the gaps. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I think yeah, some some people find it difficult to get into those old graphics, but I think there is charm to it, and there is a certain atmosphere to Morrowind that is there. Um, obviously, you cannot really compare it to the new games that came out. The tech progressed so fast; um, it's, it's it's even insane crazy when how quickly it increases. Yeah. Uh, the discussion it, had come down to. Oh, sorry. You can go first. No, 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 no. Sorry. Um, I was um, going to say, uh, with what? voice acting and everything, now we have so much that is done for uh, motion capture yeah. as well. Yeah. So yeah. you have so many actors who will go into the studio and are not just. Uh, or, I don't want to say just, but who are in for even longer because they're getting suited up in the motion capture suit and are there for days and days. and Which is a sexy look for anybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the little lights going off on yeah. our <laughs> skin, right. skin tight spandex with with uh, ping pong balls on it. It's yeah. a good look. <laughs> Are you kidding? Me? No. Yeah. yeah. No, no, really. yeah. Your, your whole body is lit up. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. But, but as Wes said, um, I feel like with games like More and um, it was really important to deliver that audio because that mm -hmm. immersed everyone. Like I still remember lines uh, of uh, your character, Jeff, uh, Degith Ur, uh, I'm a god, how can you, be, how can you kill a god <laughs> with a ground oh, and yeah. <laughs> oh. Like, all of those lines, I remember them by heart still, because mm. they left such an impression meeting that character. Because you really, when you think of it, were the first character and the last character in the story. You played uh, Jube, who was the very first character mm -hmm. who welcomed welcomed everyone in Morrowind. And then, um, obviously, the last um, character, sort of, uh, last character that you meet uh, in Morrowind was um, Degith Ur. Well, Azura then appears as well and says a couple of lines, but let's be honest, he was the <laughs> the, the main last person. So those yeah. things, they really stick with you. And I agree. Nowadays, I feel like with uh, even though there is a lot of acting, um, I feel like that voice voice lines are most important still in my opinion good voiceover oh, wow. for me will beat um good graphics at any time and there are plenty of indie games nowadays actually that do the same they might not look that great they might not even have faces but if the voiceover is amazing um that makes all the difference and i think that's what, what year was it that you first played the game um, I think, I don't remember the year, I remember that I was maybe 14 or 15, which was about 15 years ago now, because I am now 30 and it's been literally half, half of my life ago. <laughs> uh, I, I went to see my cousins and they were like, oh, you have to see this. This is the most amazing thing. Because uh, before that, it was, I've never played an open world game where I could just go and do things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that was it. It was it was four hours. We were playing there. We were sharing our stories of what happened to our characters. We even sh we were sharing names of the books that we read in the game. <laughs> yeah. It was as dorky as it sounds. It was it was fantastic because there is some good material written in there. And um, but yeah, it's 
it's that atmosphere of uh, everything combined, I think, that sticks with me still until even now. That's and there's so many things. So much. Yeah, there's so many things in the game, too, that are just like silt striders that you don't yes. see anywhere else. And, yeah. and frankly, you can love the game and still hate the cliff racers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I feel like it's absolutely. expected at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many times have you been walking along, minding your own business in Morrowind, <laughs> when a cliff racer comes from behind and just starts attacking you out of nowhere? I mean, that's life. That's just life. You're lucky if it's just one. Usually it's two or three at once. Yeah, <laughs> all out of nowhere. And then you just start running away from them and they just double. I, I yes. don't know what you're talking about, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure I do really. I just want to say one thing that I asked Ophelia, you know, when the year it was. Something happened to me um, four years ago that, about this that was pulled me up sharp. I was doing a, a, the first read through of The Secret Garden at the Shakespeare Theatre in Washington, mm -hmm. and we were all sitting around the table and reading and singing through the script as you do. And after that, this young man who was one of the cast members he came up to me and he said i know you i know you i know your voice i said what and he said you were my childhood's voice you you were in morrowind you, yeah. you and i i that was the first time i could believe that this child probably yeah. your age i don't know what you <laughs> but the whole young people yeah were watching this and l l listened and heard a voice they recognized was astounding to me. It's yeah. just something for it, doesn't it, really? Something no, yeah, it really sticks with you, especially if it was your childhood memory. Yeah, uh, those characters, yeah. they do stay with you, and it's amazing. I think that's the beauty yeah. of games as well, because you really, truly get immersed yeah. in it. And uh, talented folks like you bring it to life. Absolutely. Uh, amazing. Thank we you. were talking yesterday about um, some of us, or most of us, I'm sure every one of us, um, still get messages on YouTube or Facebook or somebody will email me, find me and email me about how they enjoyed the character and, and also the overall impact of the story on them. Oh, you know, I think it, it, I think it, there was a lot of comfort in just being a part of that game. And those single player games can be so personal. They really can. I mean, you you it, it's you and that world in a way that I think that some of the MMOs just don't touch or begin to scratch. You you really do become one with the world and with the game and that's why I think it resonates with people for so long. Absolutely. It really becomes your story. You're really inserting yourself and becoming a part of that world. There's no one else yeah around you aside from just the characters that are inhabiting this world with you. Can I ask you a question about production? Has the post-production time between the finishing of the voices to the release of the game, has that sort of remained constant over the years or has the post-production time shrunk? I, I think they, they do the voices at the end of the game production cycle now, before they go gold with the game and, and finalize everything yeah, the last thing they do is they they go with the voices there's a couple reasons for that one uh it takes them a long time and if they have changes they have devs who will do lines and get things just right know where they want things before they bring in the voice actors so they don't have to you know have us recreate things over and over again as they change them two uh voice actors are notoriously lousy secret keepers so uh they tend to uh try to keep us out of that mix until the very end and and and, and still you were signed to ndas that could mean the end of your firstborn if you actually speak you know it's important i think that we acknowledge the people that did do the post-production what a what an enormous task that must be with the all of those thing. all of those recorded lines and oh, all of that uh, i just don't know how they manage it well i Remember, also to shake my hat off to the writers yeah yes the yeah, idea yeah. of writing a world like that where all the different pieces have to fit together no matter where an individual character goes that that just blows my mind it's a yeah. huge task. Uh, do you guys remember who our director was for Morrowind? Because it changed later in Oblivion and beyond it was Mark Lampert. But the voice director 
for us in uh, Morrowind was actually Todd Howard. Really? Yeah. Todd oh, Howard wow. was the voice director for Morrowind. I do remember our sessions down at Absolute Pitch. Oh, that's DC, right. And uh, Todd would be there and he'd talk to us and tell before us. Before I mean, Mark. Yeah. Yeah, before, before Mark. Mark. Right. Before Mark, it was Todd <laughs> Howard. And I do remember going down to like Obampang during a uh, a break and having a coffee and a croissant and chatting with, about some of the characters and things of that sort with uh, Todd. And the one thing you got to know about Todd, people are like, oh, you know, they think about the, the corporation now and all this. You know what? Todd loves these games. Todd oh, loves this process. This whole thing to him is an extension of Dungeons and Dragons, board games, the old top-down turn-based games. He loves this stuff. As, as nerdy as we can be about it, he's doubly so. So uh, to be able to get a chance to be directed by him in a game for the Elder Scrolls was a real treat and, uh, and I, I just another one of the wonderful memories of it. I had forgotten about Absolute Pitch. What a great place that was. <laughs> Wasn't awesome. that? Yeah. yeah. He's still, Chip is still with Absolute. Right? Yeah, Chip Chip is still around and uh, Chip, uh, Absolute Pitch I think is no longer a studio, so right. to speak, but I think he does stuff from his, uh, his residence. Stuff, right. But Chip is wonderful and we spent so many hours in those studios uh, just honing our craft. And you know what? He always had the very best coffee. <laughs> it was it was a buzz you needed and wanted you know exactly right <laughs> hook me up chip hook me up all right so wes you've obviously played more and and other games but i was gonna ask um did any of the rest of the cast play through more and after you've been done with work or did you just uh maybe see it in the, in the media somewhere or maybe just even went back to look at the work in the in the final form, so to say? Well, I can tell you that from the earliest computer I ever had, I've always been Apple-based. My earliest computer was an Apple IIc. Those of you watching can Google that. <laughs> as big as an air conditioner. Anyway, um, so because these games, I think for the most part in those early days were PC based, I didn't have a way to watch it. So, so I never saw the early games. Would you be interested I, I would, to go I and would... watch it now? <laughs> Say again? Would you be interested to go and watch it now? Oh yeah, I'd like, yeah, actually I've sort of been watching it on the, on the screen here that, that you guys have been playing back and it, it looks amazing. I yeah, will I say my character yet, though I gotta tell you, this is slightly yeah. modified to make it um, full screen because this was back when we had all the four by three kind of more square monitors mm -hmm. and TV screens. So a couple adjustments, but for the most part, uh, it is so, supposed to be representative of what Morwen did look like at least a little bit back in the day. You can go on YouTube. But you can go on YouTube oh, and watch oh, people playing the game of what Morwen yeah. did, like at least a little bit. Back you can day. go on YouTube. Oh, I, I think someone has their. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, I had the no audio. Worries. No worries. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know uh, what I would love one of these days is just to get a game console together, get everybody together, and and play through the game. We'll have our own little uh, playthrough and and party. We'll get some drinks. Have we'll have some hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, have the cast together. And uh, we'll we'll all play and laugh and uh, and kill each other. I think it would be lovely. <laughs> well, we should we should videotape it. It'd be like science theater three thousand. Hey, exactly. Science theater. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. Have it for uh, for next year's uh, the longest day. There you go. <laughs> I, I I wonder if there's anybody out there who would uh, want to to join us in something like that. Any How about oh, someone ev us? Everyone watching this would absolutely <laughs> love to be there for that. I can speak for them already. There would be cheese. Cheese for cheese. everyone. <laughs> now, maybe now, we could make it next year's charity event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that would be a lovely thing. Next year, we'll do this all over again. And for ALZ, we'll do an experience where uh, people can actually uh, hang with us and do a personal one-on-one uh, -on -one more wind experience. Absolutely. I guess that means I'll have to wear pants for that then. <laughs> Not necessarily. That I think, could be part of the experience. Yeah. I have to get out of my pajama bottoms, right? Yeah. 
I think we live in a comfy pants world at this point. I think so. I think, you're right. <laughs> I think absolutely at this point. Yeah, um, David, you have to wear pants for that in case you get up for coffee. Okay. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see in France the uh, the big uh, runway catwalk thing where they do the fashion show, and it's for people who work uh, only in Zoom and things of that sort. So everything is just waist up. The, you know, the from home wearing shorts, line. comfy pants, speedos, whatever on the bottom, and nobody cares. You've got hairy legs galore walking up and down the catwalk, but it's the upper wow. half looks fabulous. <laughs> Going back very briefly to the conversation about the Oblivion line uh, from Catherine, where they left in that, oh, let me retake that. I was mistaken. I thought it had 10,000 views. It has 2.1 million views. Oh. <laughs> Huge. Huge. Amazing. I had someone in the chat um, bring it up and post the link, and they checked the view count. 2.1 million. That? You're kidding me. Go well, ahead. I'm tuning into that as soon as we can all. <laughs> yeah, uh, really. Oh, oh my God. God. They didn't That's put it. the line where I said shit, did they? <laughs> I said that too. I oh, think. well. But perhaps off, cut off. Hey, uh, again, you talk about how many lines they're working with and how many things yeah. they're putting together and how much time they have to do it. That they only had one thing like that is amazing. And that's the thing. It's there's, amazing. There's so much crunch at the end of development often where people are staying at the office for weeks at a time trying to get everything done because they already have that deadline set. They already have that release date set. So something yeah. always slips through and it's never intended. It's But it makes for these fun stories of, oh, this has been watched over two million times because people really yeah. found it funny because they latched onto that moment. We would be disappointed if we didn't have those things. Yeah, I mean, audiences love it when actors screw up on stage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or knock over microphones and do, you know, yeah, nice, things like that. nice things like that, Catherine, right? <laughs> well, you were so genteel when you spoke about it, Catherine. It was just very polite. Oh, let's <laughs> take that again. Is there any, it you could know, have, like, it could have been much it? worse. <laughs> it's a shop bringing. I mean, you know, I'm sure it was that. I, I just have to say one quick thing, and then all my stories are done. But, um, my son, Charles, is an avid game player, and and all the rest of it. But apparently, when this came out, of course, he didn't know I was forcing anything. So he's playing the game, and he suddenly hears his mother. He freaked out and wasn't able to play it since. <laughs> I just think that's so funny. I think now he could probably cope with it, but he was freaking out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Anyway. Oh, but this question kind of goes to everyone here, but um, especially to you, Catherine, since you said this was the only game that you voiced. But what was that process like to do the voice work for Morwen? How did that all begin for everyone here? You, not me. I've told you. I loved it. Oh, but how did you um, get the uh, the casting call, for instance? What was that process like for video games, say, 20 I years got, ago? Well, even? I, I didn't have. I, I was just asked to do it. Okay. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was uh, central casting back in the day. Oh, okay. oh Dagmar! It was sent. It was Dagmar, Dagmar. central casting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, that was Ah, uh, Dagmar. <laughs> and she knew who in town did different voices, characters could oh, do that well, kind of thing. Yes, and yeah, okay. they harvested. They harvested uh, from the. Uh, I think a very good group, as evidenced by those who are with us here today. And and you mentioned um, uh, Linda Carter. Linda Carter came in and uh, did some wonderful things, and it's wonderful to have Wonder Woman uh, in our midst. Yeah, and exactly. There were actors such as uh, uh, Jonathan Bryce and Ralph Kosham, and just, oh, I mean, I would listen to Ralph Kosham. Ralph is a phone book. A he was wonderful, yeah. wonderful. And such a great sense of humor, that guy. Oh, very yeah. dry. dry. Yes, very yes. Bless him. You know, Dagmar really was the person responsible for most of us being sent to Bethesda Softworks for the audition. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. forgotten that. You know, and, and yeah. she, she's retired, you know, and I, I just saw her recently. We, we kind of remained friends. Oh, good. And yeah, she's, she's, she's doing really well, by the way. She's the same. 
She looks the same, walks the same, talks yeah. the same. Let me tell you, Dag, Dagmar is sweet at heart, but she terrified people. Oh, yeah. no, she but, does. But, but she, she actually, when I got married, she invited me to have our wedding reception at her house because it was out in that area. And it, she was... I used to be intimidated and nervous by Dagmar, but something happened that I kept as a memory after that. My Uncle Larry, big, heavy set old Uncle Larry, laying on one of her barca loungers, falling asleep with a piece of her china, balanced precariously on his stomach, and Dagmar <laughs> reaching out with trembling hands to try to pull that plate back. And I thought, I have the mental image never to be intimidated again. <laughs> But she was wonderful. She was wonderful. And we I brought a fox. Her place is called Fox's Rest. And we went to Middleburg and I found a little fox statue of a fox at rest. And the next day I took it back up to her house and her dogs, who were so kind and so loving to me the day before, wanted to rip off the family jewels on the first day of my honeymoon when I tried to bring this statue back. So uh, luckily we got away. She got the fox and she was very nice. And uh, here's a tip of the hat to Dagmar. Yeah, I, I'm going to tell her that that uh, please do. Don't talk please about. Please it. I will, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Tell her we all send our love. Yeah. I will. Oh, she'll be she'll be really pleased about that. Okay. So, yeah. Wes, through the process of this, through the different sessions that you've done, because it's the only one yeah. I've done, have you been talking to people uh, who are online about how to get into the to the uh, game voice business? Well, I do uh, classes now through Theater Lab DC uh, for video game voice acting, and that's part of it. And a lot of people right now, I think one of the great ways for people to break into this is through mods. Now, I can't do mods because I'm with, I actually do the games. And right. because we're union, I don't do mods. But for people who are just starting out, it's a great way, one, to uh, get involved. You're working with people who are, are up and coming developers and one day will be working in this industry. So you'll want them to know who you are. If you get, that's the thing. If you get known by people who are in the business and they trust you, you can continue to work. That's you build your network. And I think starting with mods is a great way for people to, as far as developers go, and as far as voice anchors go, to get to know each other and to move forward. And a number of the people who have taken my class have actually done mods. And there are some actors out there who do impressions of me. I don't think they're completely dead on. But I do recommend them go out and do the mods. Go do these things. Get the practice because it gives you something for a demo reel. Now, for us you know? Trilodites, what is a mod? I'm happy to explain this. I'm actually incredibly excited that uh, Wes brought this up. Uh, mods are essentially fan-made additions to games. So adding new characters, new quests, entire new world spaces to play in, it's as if someone took Morwind and said, I'm going to add an unofficial sequel into the game. Uh, and for years, I've been playing mods for games like Skyrim, Oblivion, and Morwind. And Bethesda and encourages this. Ones. It, Bethesda loves the modding scene. They've hired mod authors before, the people who are making these projects. But uh, like you said, Wes, there are some incredible talents in the modern community, not just the authors themselves, but the voice actors who can really create yeah. these lifelike characters and bring them to life. And I will say, give give them all a chance, but don't forget those of us who are there at the beginning. We still like to work. <laughs> yes, we still like a paycheck here. Um, I have two questions. One, Wes, can people get access to your wonderful uh, workshops online, or do they have to be visibly at Theater Lab? No, it's all online. Uh, they go through uh, theaterlabdc.org, and uh, we've had people in Germany, England, Australia, all around the world who have been a part of this class, and it's uh, truly a global thing. It's It's been a lot of fun, although I do have to say those who are in Europe end up very tired at the late <laughs> hours taking those classes later. Uh, golly. And my second question I forgot, which brings me to why I hope everybody's pushing the donate button. Yes, please, yes. please. So the, we, we, this whole thing has been about uh, Alzheimer's and, uh, and battling this dread disease. And that's why we're able to get all these wonderful voice actors to join us. Uh, 
because it's for a, a fantastic cause. Alzheimer's, you know, by 2030, 78 million people worldwide will be suffering from Alzheimer's and dementia. And, and in the United States alone, 11 million caretakers working for free to try to, to help and to take care. And this is, this is also families, families who are devastated. I've, my mother, my grandmother, my uncle, uh, now my brother's going through this with uh, uh, a family, uh, uh, an in-law. Uh, it, it destroys families from the inside because you, you you see somebody that you love and you care for, their personality changes. They start to slip away. They You lose them before you lose them. And by donating even a couple of dollars to this, you're helping people with not only research to try to find a cure, but also the resources to help care for people. The oh. Alzheimer's Association is out there for people with advice, with uh, all sorts of uh, caretakers to, to help you get through this. So if you go to ALZ.org in the United States or if you're anywhere around the globe and you go to ALZ.org slash global, you can find the help you need. And if you click on this link and donate a little bit, you will have my everlasting love. I appreciate everything that you guys are doing. You know, and this is one thing, guys, you can all attest to this. The, people talk about gamers and say, they're apathetic. They only care about the games. They're lazy. They're this, that. No, let me tell you something. Gamers are the most empathetic group of people I've met. You, you hear all this stuff about toxicity or whatever. You know what? That's a very small percentage. It's the, the vocal minority. The very vocal minority, the people that have been reaching out, that have been trying to help in the gaming community with this have blown me away with their care, their concern. Uh, they are very active. And this it gives me hope for our future because these gamers are going to change the world in a, in a wonderful way. And what we're doing here this week is just the tip of the iceberg. So guys, please, we know you've been sharing your stories with me about your family members, people that you've been dealing with who have suffered from Alzheimer's and we hear you and we're with you. And so is the Alzheimer's Association. So if you go online, share this with hashtag end ALZ and let people know we're gonna be here all week. Uh, it is the whole community at work together that's going to make a difference. Wes, how long will the link be up on this site? after we sign off today uh george uh um, I feel like this is going to continue on is it not yes the campaign as a whole will be continuing on until i believe the 26th mm -hmm. uh and i well i know i'll be joined by west for a couple more uh live streams but the link will be open uh through the end of the 26th as of right now we have raised the 755 dollars since we started today's stream uh and for the total Thank campaign organized by ken almost 14,000 in total. No, so that's that, is, great. that is thanks to everyone here. That is thanks to everyone who's come out and shown their support. And it's incredible to see that support, see how many people in chat are talking about their experience with Alzheimer's, seeing their families go through it, and how we can all kind of come together today and discuss that and work towards change. I think it's ironic that you've got uh... Two Shea Gorths on this thread, and we're both against dementia. <laughs> it is an entire <laughs> realm in Shivering Isles. I just played through that again recently, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys, every one of you, for uh, for doing this. I First of all, it does my heart good to be in the same room with Catherine, David, uh, Elizabeth, and, and Jeff. Uh, I love you guys. And, and Morrowind and being a part of this community with you as far as just actors... And uh, you're some of the, the, the most wonderful people I've met. And uh, I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you for inviting us, Wes. Yeah, thanks for bringing us all together. That's great. Thank you so much. It feels great to, to be able to share with so many people and have such a good cause. Yes. You yeah. know, it's just wonderful. Great idea, Wes. Yeah, well, great. As far as Alzheimer's is concerned, for those that are suffering, we're the keeper of the memory for them. And we thank all of you for being the keeper of the memories for Morrowind, uh, because it was a great time in our lives and it continues on. It's amazing how it continues on. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye.